So in this video, I'm not going to go through each of these sections here because your job is to read through this yourself. However, I do want to focus on some of the more confusing terms and ideas, which I've done. But make sure that before you go and try the practice problem, which I'm about to show you in a minute, that you've read through this information, that you've looked at these equations, the steps that are involved in calculating it. I will talk about this table of critical values in a minute. But you also need to understand that when we do statistics, it's because we are trying to analyze data we've collected from some sort of experiment. So our statistics problems are always going to be used in applying them to data from an experiment. So here is a problem that's been provided for you, which starts with an experiment where they've collected data. And all the calculations have been done here so you can follow through and read through it and look and see what they're actually doing. But in the meantime, I do want to go through the practice problem so that when you try it, which you should do by yourself before you look at how I go through the practice problem, when you try it and you want to come back and check to see how you did, or if you have questions or you're struggling a little bit with these ideas, then you can come back and we can do this together, basically. So that's what we're going to do now. So here's the practice problem. A teacher noticed that her students' test scores had been improving, and so she hypothesized that her new approach of having students answer warm-up questions at the beginning of each class may have been what improved their test scores. She decided to test her hypothesis by having 11 of her students do warm-up questions at the beginning of class, and 11 of her students were allowed to just sit and chat. So based on her hypothesis, she predicted that the students doing the warm-up questions would have significantly higher test scores on the unit exams than students not doing the warm-ups. So here are her results in this table. And just like the practice problem above, which you should have read through already, there are some extra columns provided so that you can have some space to do your own work. So hopefully you've already tried this a little bit. The first thing that we probably need to do, though, because we need these numbers to calculate the rest of the numbers, is to calculate the means for both of these groups. So this is pretty easy. You've done this by now a few times. But we're going to add up all these scores, divide by the number of samples, which in this case is 11. And when I do that for my warm-up group here, I get a mean of 93. When I do it for the other group, I get a mean of 88. So once again, here we have this problem of are these numbers actually different from each other? Is 88 actually different from 93? Or could we have just gone into a classroom that wasn't being experimented on and randomly taken the test scores of 11 students and compared it to 11 other students and ended up with these two means. And so that's what the t-test is going to determine. The first thing we need to do is calculate this number that's called variance. And this number will be part of that calculation. So the sum of squares, which means that we need to do these calculations here. So remember that this symbol here, this x sub i, now remember that I means an individual measurement. Okay, so that means we're going to take each individual measurement over here and we're going to subtract from it x with the bar over it, 1. Right, so don't let the 1 and the i get confused with each other here. So this means the first mean. So that's 93. So that means we're going to take 89 minus 93 which is 4, well, it's negative 4, and we're going to square it. And whenever we square something, we end up with a positive number. So none of your numbers in this column should be negative, even if they might be negative before you square them. And so 4 squared gives us 16. So I'm going to do that for all of them. I'm also going to do the same thing in this column over here. I'm going to take the sample and subtract from it the mean. So 74 minus 88 
squared is 196. And so I'm going to do that once again for all of the measurements in this column here. Now it's important here to understand why we're actually doing these calculations. Because remember, what we want to see is if this mean is different from this mean. Well, if there were a lot of differences within the group that was used to calculate this mean, then we would have less confidence in those results. If there were fewer differences, then those results would be considered more accurate. And so by taking the difference between each of the samples and the mean and squaring it, we are showing those differences. And I can already tell that in this column right here, there's more variation within the group. And if you look at the group here, we start with 74 as the lowest and we go up to 94. Right? Whereas in this group, the variation is a little bit less, and we can see that by looking at the numbers that we're calculating over here. Okay, So once we have these numbers and we've added them up and done a few more things with them, then we can really use them to calculate our statistic. So now that we've completed these numbers, we're going to add them up. Remember that this symbol here represents sum. So we are going to take the sum of each of these numbers that we just calculated are sum of squares. So I calculated a sum of squares for our first group to be about 136. And in the second group, my calculations came out to be 407. Okay, we're almost ready to calculate variance. So notice that variance, remember the symbols that you learned above, is S squared, right? So the symbol itself has the square in it. So don't get fooled sometimes when you see that symbol there. We don't have to take the square root of it necessarily to calculate our t-test, but we do if we want to find standard deviation. And so this is the number that we just calculated, and that was 136. So it says that we need to take 136 and divide it by n minus 1. n was 11 because we had 11 samples in the group. And when I do this, I'm dividing by 10. So that's a pretty easy calculation. I get 13.6. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to divide my sum of squares by n minus 1. And I'm going to get 40.7. Okay, now as I mentioned before, we don't actually need to calculate the standard deviation in order to do the rest of our t-test, but since we have a box here and we already have this nice convenient number that we only have to take the square root of to get standard deviation, we might as well calculate it now because we'll need it later when we want to do confidence intervals for these same groups. And so I'm going to go ahead and calculate standard deviation which would be the square root of 13.6, which comes out to be 3.7. Same thing over here, square root of 40.7 is 6.4. Now, if you go ahead and do your confidence intervals, which you guys have seen before, I ended up with 2.2 and 3.9. And so typically you would do both things. You would, when you're doing a t-test on data, you would also calculate confidence intervals so that you can show your results in graph form in addition to talking about the statistic as well. So it's nice to just go ahead and do it and get it over with right now. So now we've calculated variance, which remember the symbol for variance is S squared. And when we come back and look at these equations that we need to do our final t statistics, we can find s squared in both of them. So the total equation we're looking for, we're going to end up with this t value that we call the t observed value. That's what the OBS stands for. And we're going to take the difference between our means, that's what the x with the bars across the mean, and we're going to divide that by standard error. So here's the equation for standard error, and therefore, 
here's the entire equation. So if we just plug this in to here, then this is what we get. That's why the T observed equation looks kind of big and scary. But we'll do it in these steps, right? We'll start by calculating our standard error, and then we'll take that number and we'll come back and we'll plug it into the T observed equation, which is pretty straightforward and simple. Okay, so remember that our variance, we can use the symbol S squared, for the first group was 13.6, and our variance for the second group was 40.7. So now we have all the numbers that we need to plug into these two equations. So let's first calculate standard error. So variance one is 13.6 divided by the number of samples, which we determined was 11. Variance two, 40.7 divided by 11 as well. And then we're going to take the square root of all of that. And after I do all of my calculations, I end up with approximately 2.22. So that's my standard error. So now I'm almost done. Now I just have to plug that in to my T observed equation. So I need to take the absolute value of the difference between the means. Remember, mean 1 was 93, mean 2 was 88. I need to divide by my standard error. And once I do that, I get 2.25. Now that we have our T observed value, we can come and look at this table of critical values. Now remember, you had an explanation earlier about what the alpha level means. And so whenever we're doing statistics, we're going to use critical values that have an alpha level set at 0.05. Because remember, we're pretty comfortable with the idea that there is a less than 5% chance that any differences we're observing between these things that we're comparing we're due to just random chance. So there's going to be a chance that that is true, but we want that chance to be less than 5%. So that's why our alpha is set at 0.05. If this was a different type of statistical test, you might want your alpha level to be even smaller. But for the most part and for our purposes, 0.05 is, is what we need. The other concept you've already been introduced to is degrees of freedom. We know the degrees of freedom for these two groups was 11 minus one, which gives us 10. Right, so when we come to this table, we need to find degrees of freedom, in this case 10, and we need to come over here and we need to look at our T crit value, which is our critical T value. And basically what that means is that for a sample size of 10, when you do a T test, that there's a 5% chance that if you end up with this value, 2.23, that there are no statistical differences between the two means that we're comparing. So if the T observed value that we calculate is larger than this T critical value, this 2.23, then we can say that there is a significant difference because we can reject the null hypothesis. But if that number is smaller than 2.23, then we cannot reject the null hypothesis and we cannot say with certainty that those results, those differences, couldn't have happened just due to random chance alone. So our critical value of 2.23 is smaller than our T observed value. And so, like I said before, if we ended up with a larger value, then we can reject the null hypothesis. And so in this case, the teacher can reject the null hypothesis. So the teacher can say that there is a statistical difference between the two groups of students that she studied, that the difference between the means couldn't have happened just randomly. There needed to be something there causing that effect to occur. So that's how you do the t-test.